So I'm here at EGX with Jordan Erica Weber, who wrote a fantastic book with a very long title, so I'm going to let her give it. It is? It's called 10 Things Video Games Can Teach Us About Life, Philosophy and Everything. I love it. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the book? Okay, so uh, I co-wrote it with my colleague Dan Grilliopoulos and it's basically, it's 10 philosophical topics broken down through the lens of video games. So we took five each um, that kind of corresponded with what we studied at university. Um, so my chapters are, I do one about thought experiments and how video games can be interpreted as them. Uh, one about knowledge and skepticism. So can we really know what we think we know, which is very like Descartes, that kind of, you know, um, cogito ergo sum, that stuff. Um, I did one about virtual reality, which was actually a really interesting chapter um, because of this philosopher, David Chalmers, who has this theory about virtual reality where he says that it's not, uh, it's not an illusion. It's not like a hallucination that we're having. It's a real reality. It's just made of different stuff than our reality. Um, sorry, I'm spoiling it. I don't know if you've read all of these chapters. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely the VR one. Um, and then the fourth one, I think, is about philosophy of mind. And that was a really fun one to write because that's like my favorite topic. So that's about like... Um, you know, like, what is a mind? And, you know, is it like a special soul, magical brain stuff like Descartes thinks it is? Or is it like just the brain? You know, is it physical? Or is it like functional? You know, can a robot have a mind? Um, so that was obviously really interesting because there's loads of video games that touch on those kinds of topics. And then the fifth one was actually the first one I wrote. Um, so this is the one that kind of started me on the whole journey. And that's about personal identity. Um, we talk about a load of different games, but we are, we end talking about Bioshock Infinite and it's and how it's like multiple worlds affect the idea of personal identity. Yeah. And that's like I wrote this essay about that like years ago, and that's what inspired basically the the book. I mean, Dan came to the inspiration separately, and then we came together and we're like, oh shit, we want to write the same book. We yeah. should probably do this together. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah, that's what the book is about, or at least my half. <laughs> So one of the things, so obviously you brought up the virtual reality thing. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm interested in. So yesterday I played Skyrim VR. <gasps> I got very kind of maniacal in it. It was uh. so joyful, sword <laughs> in one hand, like flames out the other. Yeah, I was yeah. like gleefully burning people. And then I kind of came back to your book and I thought, should I, is that something I should feel bad about? If we're saying it's like a real reality, am I really, should I feel bad about the, the terrible and frightening joy I take from setting people on fire in games? <laughs> Well, here's the thing, right? So it's a real reality, according to David Chalmers anyway, but it's not, the thing is we know, because we're experienced users of VR, we know it's not our reality. And that's what makes it not an illusion. Like if you were actually experiencing an illusion and you thought you were in our reality, then yeah, it would be bad that you were <laughs> killing people because you would think you were killing physical people. But because you're only killing virtual people, it's fine. I don't think you need to feel bad about it. You're an expert VR user. You know that what you're doing is not unethical. Um, so no, I don't think, I don't think you need to worry about that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I shall get right back. Oh, it was, yeah, amazing. Oh. I love Skyrim. So I was. Have you played it? So. I played it on the Switch yesterday. That was no. Cool. Yeah. So this is the thing. I'm. They were. As soon as I finished, I was so happy. They were like, yeah. go play it on the Switch. You yeah, because really you could play that, it like so. this big. I told the PR guy I would rather play that than Zelda Breath of the Wild. He nearly oh, really? died. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think of Zelda? Um, The new one? Yeah. I'm not in love with it and really? I know everyone else is in love with this game and I really really wanted to be and I yeah. like you turn it on and you're like okay this is beautiful mm, I can see what yeah. people like about this like look at those trees look at that water <laughs> I just want to walk around and then you walk around for a bit and you're like okay now what yeah. and there's like I didn't really know what I was doing and then like there were just loads of monsters and they kept coming back and I was yeah, like that's a bit boring and my swords keep breaking and like I would rather there were either no monsters or they just died and they stayed dead forever <laughs> Like, um, yeah. I think it affects, like, I, like I'm like i a little bit, um, like, I don't want to say OCD because I don't have a diagnosis and that's, you know, inappropriate. But, like, I have that kind of tendency. Yeah, I want to, like, clean kind of, up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Completionist. The fact, yeah, completionist. The fact that they come back <laughs> again and again. <laughs> and, like, the fact that you're not, like, I, I think this is why I like Skyrim. I love a to-do list. Oh, my gosh. This is, yeah. exactly, <laughs> this is exactly what I say. I'm like, yeah. tick tick like exactly you and zelda's not really things. like that yeah. like you can like tick off the shrines or whatever but you don't get you have to like look for them yourself and yeah i don't know yeah, yeah. i'm just not loving it but i've been trying i played like 30 <laughs> hours and i still oh, wow yeah so, i mean you, you gave it a good i go. do try i did like, the same thing with the witcher oh really yeah. you don't, you're not a witcher fan no. a witcher fan i mean again setting people on fire hacking and slashing like all good <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah my thing, yeah but no that's no. I think so, it's um I think it's like the you know like making potions and stuff. There's too many menus. Yeah, I just ignore all of that stuff. That's the thing. Yeah. I just generally yeah. if it's like oh you need to go and collect eighteen of these various flowers scattered amongst the kingdom. I'm like yeah no I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, cool. But, cool. Yeah. So so what do you so obviously in the book there's 
like it's basically a fantastic list of games to play to make you think um but what, what are your favorite games in terms of kind of your philosophical leanings okay so the best philosophical game is a game called soma um which if you haven't played it it's a kind of like a horror game set under the water at least that's initially i was just like oh this is just a bog standard horror game that's like yeah. the same as all the other ones you know you like you wake up in an abandoned research facility sometimes they're in space sometimes they're not this one's underwater <laughs> the difference about this one is you start out as this guy called simon in canada i think in toronto and he like has just had a car crash and he's got brain damage mm -hmm. And so he goes to have a brain scan and he sits down in this like dentist chair to have a brain scan, which is not what a brain scan is like, trust me. Um, and then he like closes his eyes and then he wakes up and he's under the sea in this research base. And you soon find out it's like a hundred years later and you're actually Simon's like psychology has been downloaded onto a computer and you're like controlling a robotic body, but he think it thinks it's Simon because it has all of his memories. And that's like a really interesting question about personal identity. Like if something remembers all of the same things as you, you know, it can, if, if someone, you know, if your mum was talking to this robot through a wall and didn't know it wasn't you, she'd think it was you because you'd know all the answers to all the questions she would ask, right? Yeah, so is yeah. it you? Is that what your personal identity is? Yeah, that's great. Um, so that, it like raises some really interesting questions about that. And then not only that, but it plays it through for the entire game. So like every choice you make is philosophically interesting in this game. And the, the designers actually intended it to be that way. Thomas Grip, um, mm. the creative director, I think, or at least the writer, he intended it to be a thought experiment. He's read all these books on philosophy. I interviewed him for the book. He was yeah. so keen. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and there's like a, there's a, the, I won't spoil it, but what happens in the end is philosophically <laughs> interesting because of the reaction that the player might have to it. Um, so yeah, it's basically one big thought experiment. It is the most philosophically interesting game, I think. Cool. Dan might disagree, but <laughs> that's what I think. Well, you're here and he isn't, so. That's true. He's probably looking after his baby. What a loser. Yeah, idiot. <laughs> so, have you, so there's a really great thread a while ago on Twitter, which was um, things that people had done in games that did make them feel bad. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the things that I contributed was actually in Skyrim where I cut off accidentally right at the end of a really long, really hard battle, I accidentally cut off my follower's head and I couldn't bear to redo the battle. So I just had to leave them there dead. <laughs> I was like, I can't do it again. Ooh. I haven't saved in an appropriate place. I just left them behind and I felt terrible about it. So since you've kind of, obviously you, with your background and your degree in philosophy, you will always have kind of had that angle on games. But now that you've written the book, do you, does any, have you ever played a game and thought, oh, really thought about who you were because of something you did in the game? I'm not sure about like what it says about me as a person except because I'm a really boring game player and that like when I play like Mass Effect okay here's an interesting story when I play yeah. Mass Effect so and when I play all RPGs if I'm playing as a character who like I normally play as a woman and I, I think I feel like even though I try and make them look different from me I'm like this is kind of me like they're being a goody two shoes they're making all the right just <laughs> they're like trying to be really nice and like persuade yeah. people to do things rather than use violence so if I want to but it, so if I want to play like when I played Mass Effect, I was like, I want to play it again as Renegade and like see what it's like. Right. So I made a character who was a man because <laughs> I was like, because I was like, then it won't feel like me, yeah. and I'll feel like it's okay to be a dick because yeah, it's a yeah. guy doing it. I was like, I made a man. He like slept around with the crew, whereas my Commander Shepard, she was loyal to Kaiden Alenko, believe it or not, the nice. one that everyone yeah, hates. Yeah, I was gonna say interesting choice. So uh, yeah, very boring, very very. Um, uh, appropriate for my choices in men in real life as well. <laughs> He's like very nice and dull. Um, he just gets out of the way and lets her do her thing. Um, so when you say these games don't represent you in real life, did you mean? <laughs> but, um, but I think the thing is, like, I don't think that. Okay, so for your story, Skyrim, cutting off the follower's head and thinking like, oh no, should I rewind it? That's not a thing you can do in real life, right? Yeah. The the rules are different in games, and we know that. Um, I do think that um, games can make you think about the choices that you've made in a way that is philosophically interesting um and i have had this like i have had this thing where i've questioned myself and what i yeah. thought i believed um but it wasn't like an ethic so dan wrote the ethics side of the book so i'm not really yeah. an expert on that but fallout 4 have you played it yeah okay so fallout 4 the story about the um oh gosh what are they called the um the androids what are they called in fallout oh, yeah, since since the since yeah. Um, I've played hours of that game. Yeah. I, do know, I do know what I'm talking about. Um, so the synths in Fallout 4, basically that's what the whole game is about, right? So this is a world in which there are these creatures that exist that look like humans, act like humans, 
but they're robots and you cannot tell the difference. They're functionally identical. So that's that theory I was talking about, a yeah. philosophy of mind, yeah. functionalism. If it functions like a mind, maybe it is one. And I thought I was a functionalist. I was like, sure, if, if, a, if a computer spoke to me like a human being and had all the responses a human being would have, it's conscious. But in Fallout 4, when it comes to choose what faction you side with, you know, you can pick the Institute who made the synths and they just treat them like machines. They want to yeah. like wipe them and fix them if they go rogue. You can choose to side with the railroad who want to free the synths. They want to treat them like slaves, basically, that they're going to free. Or the Brotherhood who think they're an abomination and they want to kill them all. And I sided with the Institute. Really? Which you wouldn't do if you thought synths were yeah. like people. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. And I only realized afterwards what I'd done. And I was like, oh, maybe I'm not a functionalist. Yeah. Maybe I think you do need to be biological to be conscious. That's so interesting. Because I would have said the same thing. And I don't, I didn't side with the Institute, but. Yeah. <laughs> well. Because I'm not a terrible person, yeah. no. <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, that is interesting. Yeah. Well, I, one of the things I liked that you said in the book was you kind of mentioned how we don't consider philosophy like a very important subject. It's not mandatory in schools, mm. it's not. And and so do you think that it is useful? Is it something we should kind of, we should reflect more in everyday life? You know, is, is philosophy useful? In I definitely think life? there are some people in positions of power who could do with thinking a bit more rationally. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I think, um, so I think in France, philosophy is compulsory in education. Yeah. Like critical thinking, right? Like you need to know things like how to form a rational argument and when you're making like illogical um, deductions, right? And a lot of people don't, a lot of people who have a lot of power, they don't know yeah. um, that this kind of stuff. They don't know how to have a proper debate. They don't know how to like look at the facts and yeah. stuff. And it's, that's all philosophy is. Like sure, there's all these like highfalutin concepts about like consciousness and stuff. And that's really, really interesting. But at its basic level, philosophy is about like, what can we know and what is true? And that's really important, yeah. I think. Yeah. And yeah, it's not taken seriously. Yeah. Like departments are getting closed and it's travesty, really. We should be teaching it to kids. Yeah. I think that's kind of what we were hoping with the book is that we would make it a bit more accessible to younger people who might not be that interested in yeah. it. Because it's a yeah. bit of a weird subject <laughs> to study. Like, you know, like very ivory tower. Like, it oh, has a to certain a, image, yeah. doesn't it? And that's what I loved about the book because it just, um, yeah, if you haven't read it, I just so recommend it. It's really, really accessible, really interesting. Whether you love video games, whether you love philosophy, or whether you don't, it just, it is a really smart way to talk about what can sometimes seem like a dense and kind of inaccessible in the ether type topic. I, I just, you know, and things like linking it to, obviously, Edward Snowden, one of the quotes that you gave mm. was how he said, you know, that he, when he made this huge decision to, some people say betray, some people, you know, say be a hero and reveal all this information, he was actually inspired by how video game heroes make the right choice and how they're just these kind of weak men and they go against these huge forces and do great things. Um, and so I loved that idea. Do you think that we can take, you know, take something from video games and kind of live better lives, be better people because of what we learn from them? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is definitely more Dan's side of the book, but like, People are inspired by the fiction they read, right? Look, look at all those people out there who are like, oh, you know, I saw like how brave Harry Potter was and how yeah. courageous he was and how like loyal he was to his friends and it made me want to be a better person. Like, <laughs> you know, if we can get that from books, we can get it from video games. Like, sure, when some people, when you say the word video game to them, or words, sorry, it has a space <laughs> in the middle. It does in our book title anyway. Um, <laughs> when you say video games to them, they're like, they just immediately think of like Grand Theft Auto or whatever. And they just think all video games are like that. And sure, there are like, there are loads that are not philosophically interesting and that you wouldn't want to take any lessons <laughs> from. But there are some that you can. And it's like, that doesn't mean that the format in itself is not worthwhile, right? It's just as worthwhile as all the other formats, like books, movies. It's just that like, maybe we don't have enough intelligent ones yet, but we doesn't mean we can't. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, I think that's probably everything I wanted to ask you about. I just, this was an excuse for me to chat about the book because I <laughs> love it. <laughs> and I will say yet again, go out, buy this book. It is absolutely fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> This week, Burby Grenade is in Birmingham, home of Cadbury's Chocolate, Aston Villa, and much more importantly, the biggest gaming festival in the UK, EGX. So come with us and we'll show you around. 